basic lighting techniques for faces and portraiture. Now those four are loop lighting, Rembrandt, split, and butterfly. Now there are different variations of these but these are the four main ones and within these four there are two different ways typically that these can be achieved and that's either with short side or broad side lighting techniques. Now when people usually talk about short side lighting they're uh, they're usually referring to short side loop lighting. Now, referring to short side uh, loop as just as short side is technically incorrect because you can have short side Rembrandt or broadside Rembrandt, and I'll explain that in a little bit here. So the first one that we have here, get the brush going, is uh, is loop lighting and the reason why it's loop is because the shadow casted from the nose creates this little loop and for it to be true loop the tip of the the nose shadow cannot touch the shadow that's being uh, broken from the cheekbone so there has to be a little bit of a gap it can be a little bit it can be quite a bit it just has to be there now what makes the short side is it's being uh, it's lighting the short side of the face which is all this right here creating oops, sorry, leaving most of this stuff right here all in shadow now what it does is it creates a slimming effect to the face and this is most useful for photographing women uh, because of that very fact but it also works on everybody men children whoever uh, one of the most widely used ones, I use it quite a bit, it's easy to, uh, to set up and to achieve what you want. Uh, the next, this one is also loop lighting, but this is broadside. Now, I wanted these two back to back to show the difference between broad and short. Now, broad is because you're lighting the whole broad side of the face right here and there's only a little bit that's left in shadow. Now you can create a little bit more shadow depending on how much you have the, the subject turn the face, but as you can see there is still a loop and I'm close to touching the shadow here, but there's still a tiny bit of a gap. But you can see the difference between the two, what it does to the face. And this technique, it really um, it makes the face look fuller and it could be good or bad depending on what you want to do. Uh, this is also great for eliminating glare with people who wear glasses like myself. Now the reason is the angle of incidence right here because whoops, I'm going to go back out a little bit. The light is going to shine here and then bounce off on the same angle so you're not going to get any reflection. If the speed light was right here, it would bounce off the subject and back into the camera, which would create the glare. So again, you're lighting up the broad side of their face right there. And we'll go back to this side right here. person is in the same, same spot but you're only lighting just a very tiny little bit of their face right there leaving all this part right here in shadow so very easy to do either one's easy they're both effective it just depends on what you're trying to achieve with your portrait the next one here is Rembrandt now the lighting setup is very similar to uh, to short side loop however the, the the height of the light, the speed light in this case, is a lot higher and what it's going to do, it's going to cast a shadow uh, creating a triangle which I'll get into very shortly here. Now when I say lighting with a speed light, it doesn't have to be speed light or mono light. It can be done with window light, like off to my side here. It could be done with the sun. 
It's just any light source you can create any of these four different lighting techniques. So what I mean with this triangle is this right here. Now it's not a perfect triangle. This technique won't work on everybody. It depends what their facial structure is like. Um, my lovely model here isn't perfectly symmetrical. She's not lined up. So I, I tried and tried and tried to get a perfect triangle. It just wasn't going to happen. And you're going to run into this with certain people. If they've barely got any cheekbones sticking out, it's just not possible. So, but the, uh, the basic concept to getting Rembrandt is to have this triangle. Now, this part of the shadow is being casted by the, the bridge of the nose, or the ridge, whatever. The top here is being cast from the top of the eyebrow, from the light coming down and creating a bit of a shadow. And this part is just the edge of the cheekbone where the light is falling off the cheek. So this technique, again, it can be used on either short side or broad side. Um, if you want more of an edgier, moody look, which Rembrandt is commonly used for, uh, you might want to go for short side. It just creates more shadow, more depth. Uh, this one was named after the master painter who commonly used this technique when he painted. So always the, the triangle and it was named after him. So again, moody, dramatic, doesn't work on everybody. Um, if you're doing just typical family portraits, you may not want to do Rembrandt. You may want to go to short side or broad loop and go from there. But these aren't really rules set in stone, they're just guidelines more or less. This one is butterfly and the reason why it's called butterfly is it creates a little shadow under here which is supposed to look like a butterfly. I've never seen it but that's what it is. Um, this isn't a perfect butterfly shadow again it's just a, a glass cast of a, fa of a face, so. But the basic idea is the light is being shot from up high. What you can see right here, this looks head on, but it would actually be like up here shooting down at the face. But it's head on and up. Uh, let's get back here. So, and you can tell that by the shadow being cast underneath the lip here and also the chin predominantly this part right here is the most important. You typically want to leave it above the lip. You don't want it to to touch the, the part of the lip right here. So anywhere just uh, between the lip and the nose is where you want to keep it. And that's typically going to be uh, 25 to 70 degrees. I know that's quite a bit of a range, but it just really depends where you want to go. Now, this was also known as Paramount Lighting, and the reason why it was called Paramount is this sort of became a staple lighting technique for uh, movie photographers in the 1930s. The more you know. So, uh, what this does is it creates sort of like a, a slimming look, and that's why it's normally used with models. And it works best if you've got very high cheekbones, so it creates the bit of the shadow in here, and, and it looks really nice. Also, I'm using just direct hard flash, so uh, because I wanted to get a lot of contrast, a lot of edge between light and shadow, just to show the examples of what I'm of uh, what I'm trying to do here. Typically for these different four ones, you'd have a fill light coming in just to soften the shadows to make the transition a little nicer. Uh, for butterfly, if they don't use a, a fill light, what they'll typically do is they'll have a reflector somewhere underneath the model and it'll just bounce a little bit of light back in uh, just to fill up these shadows a little bit around here. Same thing with the lip. And commonly you'll get a, quite a bit of shadow underneath um, or above the eye underneath the eyebrow depending on how much the eyebrows stick out on the person so it's just a, a nice more even light 
and the last one is split light. Now it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a nice hard line going right down the middle. Uh, this one will create more of a moody look. Again, not something you want to do for family portraits or anything like that. But it's uh, think of it as another tool in your toolbox for lighting techniques. And this is easiest to do. Light goes on the side, illuminates half the face. Um, and you just you typically want to get the line right down the center, but again, that's just a guideline. It's not a rule set in stone. So what this will do as well is it does narrow the face a little bit, creates more depth, mood, what have you, and uh, it might be something that you're looking for. So just to sum up everything again, these are all just, like I said, they're tools in your toolbox for lighting. Uh, you might want to go out and just try these different techniques on people. Some are easier to achieve than others. Uh, if you go out and try, you'll find that, you know, like I said earlier, uh, Rembrandt may not work on the person that you're photographing. Butterfly, you may have a hard time achieving depending on the, the, the size of the person's nose. If they got a big nose like me, it's going to be a little more difficult than somebody with a smaller nose. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, uh, like to know a little bit more of anything else, just feel free to send me an email at info at danielroshad.ca or just put in the comments and let me know if there's anything uh, more in depth that you'd like to know about these particular setups or how to do them, uh, then we'll make that happen for you. All right, take care.